Hello, this is Dr. Sullivan, and t talking about Anatomy and Physiology 1 at Bucks County Community College. And this particular video discusses DNA structure. We're in Unit 4 right now, which is entitled DNA and Protein Synthesis. And this video, we're just going to be talking about DNA structure, so we can understand how protein synthesis takes place due to the structure of DNA. In this image that I have for you right here, you can see that we've illustrated the coiling effect of a molecule of DNA as it's bound together by structures called histones into a spherical structure called a nucleosome, which is a combination of DNA and the histones that are holding it together. Those spherical structures are going to coil themselves into what's called chromatin. Chromatin is genetic material, and we're going to see when we talk about cell division how chromatin will eventually coil itself up and condense into chromosomes. Chromosomes are what is storing our genetic information. So we get our chromosomes from our parents, 23 from mom and 23 from dad, and those chromosomes are storing all the genetic information that our parents are passing on to us, like our height and our hair color, our skin color, our eye color, etc., and all the different things, including the enzymes we produce or don't produce, or the uh, photoreceptors we produce or don't produce, passing on color blindness, etc. So all of the things about us are passed on from our parents in these chromosomes, which are really just condensed, coiled up molecules of DNA. DNA has a specific structure called a double helix. The double helix describes the structure of a ribbon on one side with extensions coming off of it internally attached to a mirror image of that ribbon on the other side, bonded to the extensions coming off internally. And that creates a twisted structure called a double helix. The double helix of DNA consists of a molecule called deoxyribose, which is a sugar, a phosphate group, and then these extensions called nucleotide bases. And the specific nucleotide bases are called adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine. Those are the nucleotide bases you find in DNA. When we move to this picture, we can see more specifically the double helix with the nucleotide bases labeled. The interesting thing and unique thing about these nucleotide bases is that they will bond to other nucleotide bases using a hydrogen bond. But the important thing that makes DNA so useful and makes our protein synthesizing somewhat predictable is that these nucleotide bases will only bond to another specific nucleotide base. For example, adenine will only bond to thymine in DNA. Guanine will only bond to cytosine in DNA. If you look at the molecular structure in the middle, you'll see that we have the backbone which is sugar, the deoxyribose, and phosphate. And then attached to that, going towards the other side of the double helix, is the nucleotide base, cytosine here, or guanine here. That is hydrogen bonded to another nucleotide base. If it's cytosine on one side, it has to be guanine on the other. And then its backbone, which creates this double helix. So one section of the double helix would be sugar and phosphate, cytosine, guanine, sugar and phosphate. And that's one unit of the DNA double helix, which means that there's only really four possible configurations of the DNA double helix. Sugar phosphate, cytosine, guanine, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, guanine, cytosine, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, thymine, adenine, sugar phosphate, or sugar phosphate, adenine, thymine, sugar phosphate, which is not pictured in this here. But those are the four basic con possible configurations of the DNA double helix. The reason why this is so important to us is because eventually this double helix is going to split. So we can produce a structure called RNA. 
we produce RNA because we know that these nucleotide bases have an affinity for only one other nucleotide base. So when we build a unit of messenger RNA, for example, which we'll talk about later, we can tell, we can predict what that messenger RNA is going to look like because we know adenine will only bond to one other type of nucleotide base, guanine will only bond to cytosine, etc. So it's going to be very helpful because this is what's going to drive our protein synthesis. Every three nucleotide bases is called a base triplet. The base triplet is a set of three nucleotide bases that will eventually code for one specific amino acid. Now we know from the chemistry units that a protein is a strand of amino acids held together by peptide bonds. And what makes one protein different from another protein is the sequence of those amino acids and which amino acids are in that particular chain. The DNA is going to predict what kind of proteins we're going to produce because the DNA has a specific sequence on it of base triplets. So if, we're, if this base triplet codes for methionine, there'll be methionine will be produced in the, in the protein. And if the next base triplet codes for tryptophan, then tryptophan will be the next protein in the chain. And so on and so on and so on, creating this long chain of amino acids held together by peptide bonds that makes a protein. So the proteins that they're going to produce or synthesize are going to help to form a lot of the different things that our bodies make, like enzymes and hormones and membrane proteins, for like, uh, like ion channels in the, in the cell membrane, or plasma proteins, like transport proteins, or hemoglobin, that allows us to function in our everyday lives. So we need these proteins, and these proteins are going to produce a lot of the things in our bodies that make us unique. For instance, one enzyme is called lactase. Lactase is an enzyme that breaks down lactose, which is the sugar found in milk. If, you, if your body produces lactase, then when you drink milk or have a dairy product, your body can break down that lactose and metabolize it. If you don't produce lactase, then you're lactose intolerant, which means when you do have milk sugar from dairy products, your body can't break it down and metabolize it. So instead, bacteria has to do it for you, which is going to cause a lot of intestinal discomfort. And that's what lactose intolerance is. So if there is a specific defect in the DNA of a person who's lactose intolerant, it means that their DNA is not able to adequately dictate the sequence to make the proteins that form lactase. So it's very important. The sequence of DNA based triplets is very important, and that's the genetic code. It's a code for all of the different proteins that our body is going to make at any given time. Consider a base triplet is kind of like an area code. Whereas one base triplet, AGT, might stand for one specific amino acid, one area code, like 215, stands for one particular region of the country, like the Philadelphia metropolitan area. So it's important to get this down, that these sequences are important, and the base triplets are going to eventually, through a series of steps, dictate how to make a protein. So you can consider the DNA genetic code, or the sequence of base triplets, as a recipe for a particular protein. So quick review. We have a DNA double helix, which is two individual strands of sugar, phosphate, and nucleotide base, hydrogen bonded at the bases to another band of sugar and phosphate and a nucleotide base. Remember that we have nucleotide bases only bonding to one other particular nucleotide base, which is called complementary base pairing. Here, and the base pairs are cytosine and guanine and thymine and adenine. Those are the base pairs in DNA. Okay, that's it for this particular video. We're going to continue on with protein synthesis, talking about how we get this DNA genetic code out of the cell so that it can be translated to a ribosome, which will put these proteins together.